15 years and nobody else will ask. It's awesome. These guys right here have a guest of Mark on the table, and I don't even know who these guys are. <laughs> so, all right, all right. Um, so, uh, I'm just going to get this again. We're live broadcasting for our Facebook page. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, next week, come back out or go on live Facebook page. We have great uh, comics coming up. I can't announce who next week is right now, but it's going to be something fantastic. So make sure if you guys can be here live. If can't, uh, watch it on Facebook. Um, watch it on Facebook. Um, if you guys don't know the format, we're going to have uh, Vinny and Vicky. They're going to come up. They're going to do a little banter and everything else. We want high energy from you guys. We want you guys to give us a lot of energy, right? Uh, if you guys feel like heckling or anything, please don't do that. All right? It's a live show. We're trying to make some... Uh, some good stuff going on here. So if you guys want to, uh, have a little go out to the street or something. Get out of here, all right? Uh, we want everybody to sit back and relax and enjoy, have a great time. Uh, is everybody ready to have a good time? Yeah. Uh, a few minutes? All right, two minutes? Two minutes, perfect. All right, so we're gonna play one more quick song. We're gonna do the intro. When we do uh, some videos, do some uh, screens on the sides. Make sure you guys uh, check those out. And let's one more loud round of applause for Joe Coon and guys, let's hear it. Kick it, Ben. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Vicky and Vinny Brand. Nice group. Yes, yes, we have oh, some man. really some VIPs here. Hello, Ginsburg family. Uh, uh, hello, Caruso. Yeah, what did I look? He got a girlfriend. Oh, hello. <laughs> he a yeah, he oh, got a wife. He's got both. <laughs> and then the wife. That's a wealthy fella right there. Good to see you. We were a little nervous before because I was talking to him, and I said, "Are you alone?" And he said, "Yes." Uh, <laughs> I'm the kid. Nice to have you. We got a great show tonight, right? We do. We do. Oh I'm my excited. God, Jackie, fabulous is wow, here. I'm so excited for Jackie. So excited. Jay Black is here. Yeah. Yep. Joe Coonan and the boys are uh, here. Yeah. Every week, man. Every week. And we and we had a we had a time when we've been working our ass off, right? It's been a long week. It's been a long. We had a we had a Chelsea Handler yeah, who who did phenomenal, phenomenal. And she's got two more nights. Yep, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday, Tuesday night. This girl, is, I shouldn't call her a girl. No, right? you should not call her a girl. Exactly. What do you call her? A woman. This woman. A woman. This broad, I'm telling you, <laughs> this broad is funny. She's really funny. And I was a little nervous about me because I didn't know if she was going to be, uh, what's that word? Don't even say. I thought maybe she'd be a little difficult, but she's a sweetheart. I, mm -hmm. thought, she, I thought she would be... Uh, mean to me uh, because I'm used to women being mean to me. And You're such a baby. I am a baby. I gotta tell you something. I, in our house, because there's so many girls, yeah. I, I am just used to doing whatever women want uh, to just shut them up. No, first of all, we go, the whole house goes around you. Oh, holy you shit. just can't Holy hear shit, it. sir. <laughs> this is now called Vicky and Vinny Truth or Dare. Lying bullshit. Nothing goes around me. No, it does. You just don't know because it's all behind the scenes. <laughs> so yeah. I'm always like, Daddy wants you home. Where are you? Where are you? Daddy wants to watch a movie. Where are you? That's it, constantly. And then when we have to talk, this is going to sound mean, but it's, it's not. He knows we do this. Because Vinny's 80% deaf, when we have to have a private conversation about him, we just all turn our backs and we scoot away, and then we say, like, the dog peed on the floor, yeah. Do you want to hear a good story? So, so a long time ago, I have hearing aids, and, and my hearing aids have a remote control. So this is what I call a marriage saver. <laughs> if there's a bunch of bullshit coming my way, I just turn her down. And, okay, and there's that frequently. I mean, I wear the batteries of this thing out, just down and down we go. Now, here's what happens. So we, get, we don't fight. We very rarely fight, and when we do, it's Vicky's fault. And oh, yeah. Right or wrong? No. Yes, mm -hmm. women love to fight. No. So anyway, we get in a fight one time, and, and Vicky, in that fight, I don't like calling names. I don't like calling, I will never call names because that shit comes back to haunt you. Okay, if you're a smart man, you know if you say something, that shit's forever. So I won't call names, but Vicky, uh, she's a name. I oh. am not. Mm -hmm. I, in 25 years, I've called you an asshole, what, twice? Come and on. I've, and I've been an asshole been many an times. Yeah. I gotta say, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times I say, I wonder if she even realizes how big an asshole I'm being right now. <laughs> but so here's what happened. So we're in the fight, and Vicky calls me an asshole. And I heard her clear as the bell. And I said, Did you just apologize? And I was just trying to see what she would say, because she knows I can't hear her. And Vicky went for broke. She goes, yes, I did. I, I was just ready for the fight to be over. And I'm like, you just called me an asshole. She goes, how'd you hear that? <laughs> that was a very funny day. Yeah, and, that was. Yes. And yeah. now, now uh, we're down to... Yeah, well, we're down to only till Tuesday. But yeah, today was a big day for us. Um, our, our one daughter went back to school today. Uh, she went back to Michigan. Yeah. And like good parents, because we didn't want to do the 10-hour drive... We stuck our 17-year-old with her to do the 17-hour drive. Don't do that drive. Yeah, yeah. So, and, yeah. So and I was a little nervous about the whole thing. It, it was a little rainy today. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, should I just drive out there and somehow get back for the show? And, and, but this is why. Because really, honestly, uh, Tabby's a good driver. 
Tabby's a better driver than Madison, and we don't have to worry about our kids because our kids could care less what we do, so they never watch what we do. They don't ever come see us at work. Right. So we can talk about how yeah. bad of a driver Maddie is. And we can talk about how you're yeah. a shit driver. You're a shit driver. I'm spatially impaired. I've told you that. Vicky has hit more shit <laughs> than any demolition derby driver. And when Vicky hits shit, she's so adorable. She'll hit something and go, sorry, and no one ever gets mad. <laughs> I told my kids, if you do something wrong, if you always own up to it and wave and smile, yeah. most people don't get mad. Yeah, so, so. Vicky, Vicky thinks, you know, if you hit your manslaughter, sorry, <laughs> that was on me. This is why I'm nervous. I, this happened just last week, and I took a picture of it. Yeah. And I, I sent Crystal a picture. My, my daughter my, that went back to, drove to Michigan today, right. took my van for a drive. She was well, out for an hour. She took the van because her car was getting fixed because she is also spatially impaired. Yeah. And it seems like just on the right side. So and, she was missing a mirror, like the whole side was dented. So we had to get it fixed before she went back to school. Yeah, and, and the mirror, this is, this is when someone needs to work on their bullshit. She comes home, the mirror's hanging from the car. Like literally right. like this. Yeah, just doing the, doing the dead limp mirror. And I go, what, what happened? Oh, I swerved to avoid a deer. I'm like, you couldn't come up with better shit after whatever you hit? Your mother's a much better bullshitter. So then she comes home midday and she goes, Dad, all serious, goes, Dad, you gotta get the van looked at. There's something wrong. I can't believe you're driving the van and it's making that noise. I'm like, oh my God, I know I'm deaf. Maybe I, maybe I missed something. Crystal, throw, show me the picture, Crystal. This is, what she, this is what I went out and looked at the van. This is what I saw, okay? <laughs> I go, Maddie, did you hit a, a road guy directing traffic? Just tell me. Just tell me there's no blood around that. And so I take Vicky out and I go, did you see what your daughter did? Now, I'm a little worked up because I'm like, whatever you hit, you should have stopped, right? So I bring Vicky out and I assume Vicky is going to be concerned. And Vicky comes out and looks at us like, I've done that a fucking hundred times. Well, I'm really happy because now we have an orange cone in our possession. Like, yes. we might need it later on in life. Yes. I don't know. We don't know what detour got wiped out, but it got wiped out. So it's a we, big cone, too. It's like this high. Yeah. Like, I don't know how she missed it. Wedged up underneath there and yeah. just drove around for an hour and a half. So we got a great show, right? We do. We have a really great show. And, and you know me. You know me all week long. I talk about, I want to hear the band. I want to hear the band. Yes. Joe, Joe, can you get lights on, Joe? Let's talk to Joe for just a second. Joseph. Joseph, approach the microphone, Joseph. Joseph, I want to ask Hello. you a question. So, and this is a rock and roll thing, and, and I presume that you'll know the answer. So, every Sunday, the cop, look, the cops are already here. They're ready. Oh, hi. Holy shit, hello, Joe. Hello. The cops are here. So, Joe, every Sunday, they tell you to shut down, and then you play one more song. And am I wrong? Are you turning the amp up at that moment? Always, man. <laughs> Joe, you, you got to break the mold. You yeah. got to break the mold. You got to, Joe. I'm telling you, and the band keeps getting better. Are you going to play some horns today, Alex? No horns today. These guys are so good. All multi-instrument, uh, and they're all amazing. And Kai, you're brand new to us, right? Yeah. And how long have you been playing bass? Six, seven years. Six, they don't even know. I don't know. Six, seven years. They don't give a shit. <laughs> That's when you know they're talented. Now, you guys got something juicy for me here, Joe? You ready to play? Always. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know that Joe smokes a lot of pot before he does this show, right? <laughs> you know goddamn right well Joe's all stoked up. Joe, play us something. Would you hear Joe Coonan and the boys, everybody? Advance. <laughs> I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Thank you. 
hitchhike or jump a railroad train Your kind of love drive a man insane Look for me walking just in the old I feel a little, I feel a little, uh, a little uh, nostalgic, not nostalgic, melancholy tonight. I do feel, I feel melancholy too. Why do you feel melancholy? Well, because last Sunday when we were here, it was so hot and um, it was really hot and today's a little chilly. And when I got up this morning at 5.30, it was dark out. So that means fall So you're saying coming. the show is going through menopause. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I feel, I feel a little melancholy because Steve Holgren and Tommy Porter are missing. Oh, uh, yes, they are missing. They, they've been here like quite a few, many yeah, weeks. Almost yeah. every show. Well, mm -hmm. But we have, we have the yeah. Ginsburg well, here. That makes yeah. us fine. And of course, mm -hmm. uh, we the have Caruso's. the Caruso's are here. Yeah. And, and this guy with his... Well, you know what? I keep looking at this couple because I wish we could get a camera on them because they are so color coordinated. <laughs> and yeah. I really... Thank you. You are especially yeah. whipped, sir. No, but look at she's I, got that beautiful shirt. I yeah. love that shirt. Yeah. You it's made him wear the shirt. Wait right? a minute, yes. it's his yeah, birthday? I know. I know. Is today your birthday? Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday, Happy sir. Birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy how, birthday. How old? Vinny, that's so rude. You do not ask people that. I'm not trying to sleep with him. How old are you? <laughs> how old? 53. You look like shit. Let me tell you no, something. Oh, you look amazing. You look very good. You look fantastic. Happy birthday to you. I'm going to get you a nice little uh, birthday dessert or gift or some goddamn thing. Uh, you know, better than making you wear a shirt. Anyway, <laughs> uh, now I'll tell you, I always like my birthday because that birthday is time for a home game. All right, now, <laughs> do you know what that means? Do you have any idea what that means? No? Shame on you. So... Oh, wait a minute. Do we have another birthday? Is it your birthday, too? My birthday was August 7th, and his birthday is August 23rd. Oh, well, happy so birthday really your in birthday the past now. and in the future. Well, I was working at Harris's. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wanted to come here. You guys had a show on my birthday, right? On the 7th? I think so. I think yeah, so. Oh, uh, okay. Would All you right. like? Would you like us to get your name on the show? <laughs> Girls in a full-fledged conversation over there. <laughs> it's my birthday in August. He's in December, and we want free shit. <laughs> Can you somehow also? It's not just about that guy. It's me. <laughs> That's the problem with the younger generation. It's just fucking around them. <laughs> how, how old are you? 
uh, yeah, these are just jokes. This is a comedy. Uh, <laughs> and we'll get you a nice gift too. Give them a big round of applause yeah. for their birthday. Are you guys also married? Yes. Are you engaged or married or? What's that, sir? She wants six kids. She, uh, I think she said he wants six kids. Six? I okay. think I'm ruining his birthday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Vicky. Uh, well, so we, we have, have a sing- big birthday coming up, we too. Do. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have our youngest daughter's birthday this week. Turning eight? Turning eight. Eight Turning is eight great. Years old. Uh, we were, we were yeah. working on stories today uh, yeah. for the show, and Kathy, seven years old, going to be eight, said to me, Dad, Dad, why don't you just get some ideas from other people and then take credit for them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's and funny. I said to her, he does it all the time with oh. me, honey. All the time. So wrong. Now, people ask us all the time about the, the street signs inside yes. the club. Yes. And, uh, and people there want is. a street sign, okay? You've been a regular for a while? Yeah. And you probably want a street sign with your name on it, right? Yeah. No, you don't. Let me tell you why. Yeah. You don't want one. Not yet. Those street signs are all, uh, when you go in the club and you see them, they're all uh, memories from friends uh, of the club yeah. that passed away. And we, right. memorize, we memorialize them by putting their name up uh, on a street sign. So sometimes people will say, I want a sign. And I say, I'd love to give you a sign. <laughs> <laughs> it took you a while to get that joke. So, so one of our favorites, can you get the sign? Can, you, can I reach it? Can you bring it up? So this is our very first sign ever at the club. This is Maury's, Maury's Place and Buffet Way. Now, Maury, obviously, is the guy that we're honored, uh, that's honored on that sign. And uh, we're going to tell you a little story about Maury's funeral, because that's the only way you get a sign. Not only do you have to be a, a good customer, we have to go to your, <laughs> to your planting. Um, now, Maury came here very early on. Right. He came every Friday and sat for two shows Every Friday. Every Friday. He never missed. He was yep. here more than we were. We would take a Friday off, and we would get a, a, a call on Monday. Where were you? Where? Yeah. Every Friday. For years. For years. Years. He was, I would say, what, five years? Probably something like that, yeah. Five? Maybe longer. I but whatever know. it was, he never missed. He would come in at 5 o'clock. The doors back then would open at 7.30 with an 8.30 show. Yeah. He would come at 5, be here when the staff set up. He would... Uh, stay here until 2, 3, 4 in the morning right. until we all left every Friday. Now, Maury uh, was a great guy. He was. But uh, he did not have, according to him, a lot of friends. And we became his family. And he would count on us. And he would give us all kinds of trinkets. He gave us little... Uh, uh, well, I mean, for him, they weren't trinkets. They were... Um, he would give us a lot of things that had with angels. Okay, and Maury also believed he could cast spells on people. He did. He yeah. thought like he could cast like hexes on people. Like yes. he was pissed at some woman he worked with. And so he legitimately... And he would come in and say, I put a hex on Joe. Yeah, and he really felt like he put a hex on her. Yeah. Now, we're not, we're not trash talking him. We just thought it was funny. He was a chain smoker. He was a, he was a big Well, yeah, because back then you could smoke in the club. Yeah. So he would just sit and smoke and smoke. And then he would drink Coke with grenadine. Yep. He would, have the, he would have the buffet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Four or five trips, almost fucking bankrupted us. Right. And then at the second show, he would order a hamburger and apple pie alamos. Right. And Maury was a big guy. And, but he spent every single Friday with us. And right. then he would sit down late at night and tell us his different theories on life. Uh, and some of them were a little scary. Some of them were a little out there. Yes. Some so, were a little out there. So what happened? He always told us, I have no friends. You're my only friend. And one night, uh, not long before he passed away, we're down at 4 o'clock in the morning. He's chain smoking. My eyes are a little slit. Vicky is looking at Maury, and she can barely keep her eyes open. And I said, Maury, we're going to get you to quit smoking. And he goes, ah, who cares about smoking? A virus is going to kill the world anyway. I don't give a shit about smoking. And Vicky, wow, he was a prophet. Yeah. 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 And Vicky's looking at him, and all of a sudden, Maury goes, what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah. <laughs> and Vicky's like, ah, no, don't put a hex on me. So... Next thing you know, we get a phone call. Yeah. And this is after years of Maury spending a lot of time with us and telling us that he has no friends. It's his sister who we had met exactly one time. Hey, listen, Maury passed away. And we said, okay, uh, that's terrible, tragic. And we immediately said, 
we have to go to his funeral because no one's going to be there and we can't let this man get buried by himself. Right, no, nope. right. can't do it. And then Maury worked at AT&T. So uh, that morning, it's me, Vicky, our good friend Barry J, mm -hmm. uh, who also has his own sign hanging in the club right now. Uh, and Lou, our bar manager, Nancy Capella. Nancy, right. And then Richie, Richie Wentz. Wentz right. yeah, and we're also all going to go. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go up and we're going to be the only people at this man's funeral because we want to be uh, honor him. And he's Jewish. We had never been to a Jewish. Right. Yeah, we don't, we didn't, never been to a Jew. Are you Jewish? Yeah. So, you know, when you go, we know what to do now. <laughs> I'm not rushing you. I just know how to handle it. The Jews don't waste time. You drop and I'm fucking, people are digging a hole. It's really quick. Yeah. So, uh, so the funeral is a Monday because he died on a Saturday and you won't bury people, right, on a, on a Sunday. Yeah. No, nobody buries anybody on Sunday. The, the Catholics don't do it. What's that? It's overtime. It's overtime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Catholics won't do it. They don't want to cut into Sunday collection. Yeah. Anyway, so we have to go up to a Monday morning uh, burial at this Jewish cemetery, and we're running late. It's a rainy day, and we're driving like mad up Route 1. We've never been to a Jewish funeral. All I know is the Jews seem prompt. So it's like 5 after 1, and we're supposed to be there at 1, and I'm like, God damn it, we're late. I'm, and we pull into the cemetery, and we see a little tent, and in that tent is just the rabbi mm -hmm. and two people and the body. And I go, that, that's got to be Maury. He's got no friends, no family. And we all pile out of our cars, and we go running up this hill, and the, the rabbi is already in full uh, phlegm mode, and <laughs> he's doing his thing. And we all just filter into this little rain tent, and we all kind of like, kind of like shift down, and we go in. And the rabbi stops what he's doing, and he's looking at us like, what the hell are you doing? And we're all just very reverently nodding like that. And we're all standing there, and he starts up again. And while I'm looking down, I'm trying to be very serious, I look at the casket, and it doesn't say Maury Solomon. It says, like, Saul Auerbach. And I realized that we're in the wrong fucking... We have found the only other Jewish man in North America with no friends. And I'm like, oh, and my eyes go big as saucers. And I'm like, oh my God. And Barry J had the sickest, warped, most sense, uh, best sense of humor. He's next to me and he goes, what's wrong? And I'm trying to be very discreet. But I have to get us the fuck out of this funeral. So I lean over to Barry and I go, that's not Maury. That's not Maury. And Barry goes, what? I go, that's not Maury. And Barry can't hear me. And Vicky is like, what are you doing? And I, I nudge Barry and I go like this. And Barry and I go outside the little canvas tent. Which is Bar really just like this. So like yeah. speaking just yeah. like that. It's nothing. There's, yeah. there's no sound barrier. It's no. just a ring. And Barry goes, what's wrong? I go, that's not Maury. We're at the wrong goddamn funeral. And Barry J finds this to be the funniest thing ever. And he goes, ah! And he runs down the hill. <laughs> okay. He runs away. And now I got to go back into the funeral and get the rest of the crew. And I walk back in. And now everything is, everything is stopped. And they're staring at me. And I walk in. And I lean over. And Vicky's like, what the fuck? Are you? And I lean over. I go, that's not Maury. And Vicky goes, what? <laughs> that's not Maury. Look at the name. And Vicky looks at the name. And then she leans over. And we all get the message it's not Maury. And then collectively, we all did this. <laughs> and we walked out of that little tent. And we ran down the hill, howling, laughing. Forever leaving these people wondering who busted into their funeral. Now, I figure... Well, that's it. We, we miss Maury's funeral. And we start driving out of the cemetery. And we're like, well, we tried. Right. We, we gave it. And all of a sudden, Vicky sees this en enormous funeral. It's just the biggest funeral I've ever seen. Car after car after car. And she goes, hey, that's Maury's sister. Yeah, right? she, was in the, the, she was in the procession. She's mm -hmm. in the procession. And so we follow. And we get to, the, to Maury's actual funeral. And right. there's how many people? Oh, it was packed. It was packed. Sold out. Yeah, it was sold out. And we thought, we're standing there, and we said, were all these years alive? Like, yeah. 
What what happened? Yeah, Vicky's like he lied to us for all these years, telling us he has no friends and family. This is a this is like a state funeral. Yeah. Okay, so now you know how at the Jewish funeral they they put the dirt on you. Did you do? Okay, these people. I don't know if you, any of the, some of you uh, African American black people. I don't know what, what I'm supposed to say, but <laughs> and some of you don't know if you've never been to a Jewish funeral. Okay, unless you went to Sammy's and. Um, Sammy Davis Jr. Okay. Anyway, so what the Jews do uh, is, is to save money, is everybody throws a little dirt in. They have to pay a guy a shovel. And <laughs> pick up the dirt, they're like, ah! And they're, oh, they're having full conversations while they're doing it. Like, yeah, yeah, what are you doing later? Yeah. <laughs> I like, so I'm like, what is going on? So I'm, I'm intrigued, and I say to somebody, hey, I go, uh, were you good friends at Maury? And he goes, who? I go, Maury, were you good friends at Maury? He goes, who's Maury? I go, the guy you just threw dirt on. And he goes, oh, no, no, we didn't know him. I go, did anybody here know him? No, nah, we didn't know him. Go ahead, tell him why. At at and if you go to a fellow employee's uh, funeral, you get the whole day off. With pay. Mm -hmm. No shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, you son of we immediately switched to Verizon and yeah, we never looked back. Yeah. We got a lot of show, right, Vicky? Yeah, yeah, we have a we great got a lot show. of show. We have a great show. We got a lot of show. Get ready to play up this next time. Get ready to play up this next time. I'm looking for a Actually, our whole show tonight, just incredible. Yeah, so, we do. Uh, this next comic, very good friend of ours, he comes here and he kills it every single time he's been here. I've never. Uh, never seen a guy work for so many different audiences and murder. I hope I'm not putting pressure on him. And, um, and he's in about, what, 20 Hallmark movies? A lot. 20 yeah. Hallmark movies. He's a regular on 101.5. He's a regular here at the Stress Factory. Please put your hands together. Make some noise for our good friend Jay Black, everybody. It is exciting to be here tonight because I'm married, so I'm excited to be anywhere that she isn't. It's been six months. We've been together. This, anybody here, where are the married people at? How, you are all married. Whatever you, how long have you been married? 18 years. No, you've been married for 26 years because of this quarantine. Everybody adds eight. You see, you have to understand, my wife and I got married under the idea that I was a stand-up comic. So the entire premise of our relationship was that I would not be at home. So we've realized that the only way it works is if I'm not there. It's been bad. Even my kids have been coming up to me like, you, you can go. My son was like, hey, I re-listened to that Cats in the Cradle song, as it turns out, I think that kid turned out okay. I married a special ed teacher. Is anybody here a teacher? Round of applause. Teacher, it's a great job if you don't like money or respect. Now, here's the thing. My wife's special ed teacher. She's a good woman. She makes the world a better place. Here's the problem. She spends all day long making children feel better about themselves, which is fine, except it crawls into her voice and it stays there. She gets special ed teacher voice and it doesn't go away. I hear it all the time after sex. Like, no, you did a very good job in there. You were trying very hard, I can tell. Don't cry, here's the... Don't cry, here's a stick. I got stickers, I'm trying to think I have a book, and there's a frog. Good job. Now, do we have... What's that? You're the best. I'm the best. You did the best time. I feel like it's going to be a long night for all of us. Well, listen, she hasn't had a drink in six months, so this is a big night for her. Uh, so, okay, here's the thing. Dating, are you guys dating over here? How, how long have you been dating? Six months? Okay. Oh, so you got together right in quarantine. Okay, so you guys have been together five years. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Dating people, here's my advice to you. Never have the conversation, how many people were you with before you were with me? You don't want to know. I had this conversation with my wife accidentally. 
So I found out when she was in college, she spent a semester in Ireland. And this disturbed me. Because ladies, you like the Irish guys, I know you do, I've read your romance novels. So I said to my wife, when you were in Ireland, were you with a lot of guys? And her answer was, don't worry about it. And that is not a very good answer. That is not what you want to hear. Because women have a particular kind of math when it comes to that, right? If she says two, probably means five. If she says five, probably means ten. If she says don't worry about it, means they're singing folk songs about her in Ireland as we speak. There is a statue of her in Dublin that boys touch for good luck when they turn 13. Now... I don't know how many, of you, how many of you have been using your time in quarantine to grow as a person. That's what I've been trying to do. It's been working so far. I've put on 20 pounds. Now, that's a dumb joke, and I feel bad for telling it. But here's the thing. I lost a lot of weight because I fly for my living. I, I, well, I used to. Now, I don't have a living. But in the old days, I used to fly for my living. And in this world, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need a scale to tell you that you're fat if you fly. All you need are the eyes of the other people when you step on to a Southwest flight. If everyone with an open seat next to them was looking at you like, it's time to drop a few pounds. Listen, I don't mean to make fun. I was on a plane. There's a woman next to me. So much of her was on me. We hit turbulence, and technically, I cheated on my wife. Now, some of you are afraid to fly. If you are afraid to fly, here's my advice. Do not be. It is a safe form of travel. But if you are, here's how you get over it. This is what you do. Next time you get on a flight, look around the cabin for douchebags. If you see a douchebag, relax, okay? Because God doesn't kill douchebags. Have you noticed that? They live forever. If I get on a plane and the person next to me is a volunteer nurse at a burn ward, I'm getting off that plane it is going to crash. The guy next to me is Texan Senator Ted Cruz. Crack open the cocktails, boys. It's smooth flying ahead. That asshole's going to live to be a thousand, in part because he's a lizard person from space. Do your research. Now, let me pull the curtain back on that joke a little bit. I wrote that joke several years ago, but I could never get it to work because I could never find an asshole big enough that when I would mention his name, everybody would go, oh yes, what an asshole, we agree. Then a couple of years ago, I'm watching CNN and I see Ted Cruz's scrunchy little face. And ladies and gentlemen, I heard an angel's choir begin to sing. I was like, honey, get in here. I found my asshole, which confused my wife. Context is key, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a question. Have you ever had a poop so good it literally turns you into a better human being for the rest of the week? Just like the whole rest of the day, like up and up and up and up. Let me get that door for you. And everybody's like, what got into you? And it's like, it's not what got into me. Have you ever had one so bad it made you question your own humanity? Like you get down, you're like, I must have been bitten by a werewolf and nobody told me because there should not be a license plate in there. Now... I have three kids. Do we have parents in the room? Parents? Anybody here? Do you guys have kids together? Can I give you some advice? Get her pregnant. Do it tonight. It'll be fun. For you. For her, it hurts a little bit. But for you. Listen, I made a whole human being in under a minute. Took my wife nine months. Lazy. That's all I'm saying. Work smarter, not harder. That's my motto. And I got a sticker from before. But here's the thing. You do get your wife... Here's the thing about kids. They're uh, terrible. Uh, I have three. We just uh, had our, our third baby, which we're very excited about. No, 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 no. No, she was a whoopsie. And I'm worried if you applaud, your applause will go to heaven. God will hear you, and he will send me another. Because here's the thing about whoopsie babies. You don't love them any less. But holy shit, I'm getting everything tied. I'm getting a vasectomy, my lower intestine, my aorta. I don't want anything leaking out. Because here's the problem with the whoopsie baby. Two problems. Number one, you and your wife have to go up and set that divorce calendar all the way back to 18. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you have countdown timers on your phone right now. I know you do. Problem number two is existential. Because you know one day that little girl's gonna come to me and be like, Daddy, what's the point of life? Why are we all here? I have to look her in the eyes and be like, well, the reason why you specifically
specifically are here is uh, drinks for two for one. The condoms were all the way across the other side of the room, and well, mommy and daddy both said, what's the worst that could happen? And it was you. Happy birthday. And it's just... Here's a question. Who's more sexually insecure, men or women? Shout it out. Men. Men, 100%. Here's how I know. Number one, I am a man. Number two, we have a word for what comes out of us at the end of sex that is the most insecure little fella trying to be a big fella, look at me, I'm so sure. What do we call it? Our load. It's two ounces of goo. We talk about it like a tanker truck was pulling into the bedroom. Load. You can get two ounces through the TSA. Load. It's barely a sneeze. Barely. And we always talk about it like, you better back up. I don't know if you're going to be able to handle this. Put your goggles on. Here it comes. Choo. I mean, that's it. And you girls always have to pretend, oh my God, so much. Look at you. Someone's been working out, I can tell. Listen, I'm going to go get a wash, I mean a towel for me and a Gatorade for you because I can only imagine you're dehydrated after that massive load. Fun having kids. Uh, I will say this. Uh, I, I, well, by the way, I hope I haven't offended any of you tonight because I look around this room, I feel like many of you own weapons and don't have much to lose. Because I do piss people off all the time, I don't mean to, right? My wife gets mad at me all the time. Like, my wife and I are currently in an argument about cleaning products because my wife will go out and buy all natural cleaning products. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, done a little research so you don't have to, all natural is an old Navajo word that means doesn't fucking work. They don't work. My daughter spilled slime on a rug. Do you think lemon pepper vinegar is going to get that out? I need industrial shit. I need the stuff that made the Joker. Ideally, that is what I'm putting on my rug. And here's the thing. My wife and I is always like, she's always like, well, we can't have toxins in the house. We can't have toxins in the house. And I'm like, honey, we live in New Jersey. Toxins are all we have in New Jersey. You guys were a lot of fun. Thanks for putting up with me. Enjoy the rest of the show. Stay safe, everybody. Good night and stay safe. I, sorry, I got the light. I didn't know. I thought I was there. Oh my God, that was fun, right? That was fun. That I've was never fun. seen my, Jay I'm, have a bad set. I just have to do my, I, you know, for people that wear glasses with the mask, you either have to decide to see or have your, a mask on. So a lot of times I'm just not seeing. So yeah, sorry yeah. about that. I just have We're to, getting into the mask groove. Yeah, we are. A lot of people don't want to wear the mask. And I gotta tell you, you gotta wear that goddamn mask because it, it's no big deal. Wear the mask. I don't know why. Huh? No, neither can I. So it's just, you know, I'm just winging it when I'm walking. Yeah. Just so, uh, so we have some great shows coming up. We have to say, you know, we're going to plug Chelsea Handler again for Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday. Go see her. She's so yeah, good. Yeah, so, so good. We won't be here Wednesday because we got the big day in the household. Yeah, big day Wednesday. But yeah. Thursday, listen to me, Thursday night. Uh, you guys got to look this woman up. She oh, she's so goddamn so funny. funny. We just found her. We just found her. Yeah, so friend Keith, Keith Robinson. Keith Robinson, who yeah. opens a lot of time for um, Wanda Sykes. Sykes. Yeah, and he's also a headliner himself. Yeah. And he turned, turned us on to Daphneek Springs, right? Yeah, Springs. but she's just Daphneek. Uh, I, Daphneek. Uh, yeah, and we spent the last two days oh my God. just watching all of her videos. you got to go follow oh this girl my gosh, on Facebook. She's so funny. She's so good, right? Yes, and so funny. Yep, and she's going to come here live Thursday night. Thursday night. Yes, and I'm telling you something. That girl, like, sir, I'm telling you, you look at maybe you don't believe me, because I'm telling you, she's funny. Are you guys fighting? Oh, okay, good, yeah. I don't know if you guys... It, but if they were, then, like, let them be, for God's sake. Now, if they're fighting, that the whole audience needs to know that. Okay. All right, so, uh, and then we have Andrew Schultz. Yep, Andrew Schultz, which, just so I don't get any more calls, Saturday and Sunday, he is sold out. Right. And so, then, mm -hmm. Labor Day weekend. But he might add a show Friday, fingers crossed. Yeah. And Marlon Wayans will be here on yeah, Labor Day Marlon. weekend. Yeah. Let's see Marlon Wayans get your tickets early. That guy sells out. He's great. We got more show. You guys ready for more show? Let me hear it loud and clear. Yeah. 
So uh, now I, I got that. Vicky, just we should talk about this just for a second. So right before the shutdown, mm -hmm. we booked this comic. Yeah, we did. And she's she's great. Yeah, we were so excited to have her. We were so bummed about that. Right, and then she came in, and then they shut the world down. They did. Mm -hmm. So then we said, hey, listen, shit's been so wacky in 2020. Let's give this another go around. Right. And see if some other bad shit will happen. Right. But nothing happened. She is absolutely fantastic. You know her from America's Got Talent. She yeah. is absolutely amazing. Just signed her own TV deal. Please welcome Jackie Fabulous. Give it up for the owner. He has to say all that shit. He owns this bitch. Give it up for Vinny. Yes. And his wife. Vinny and Vicky. Yeah, this was my last uh, professional live whatever show, March 12th. And then the world came to an end. And then so memories associated with this place, they're fucking horrible. So if I, if I start crying out of nowhere, please don't be concerned. This is a dark place for me, trauma. Um, you know what's funny is that when I was here last, I, uh, I brought my boyfriend, and I don't bring men to shows. I wanna be able to be a hoe in peace. <laughs> I don't bring men to shows. So my new boyfriend back then, I brought him to a show to share the experience, and he was in the hotel room while I was here that Thursday. I'm like, when I get back from this show, I'm gonna fucking change your life. I'm gonna do all the shit you want me to do that I always say no to. We're in Jersey, goddammit, I'm gonna do it. We are in New Brunswick. I'm gonna let you in every hole. You understand me? I'm gonna let every orifice you can enter, do whatever you want. And then I got here, performed for 13 people. Cause the news said, bitches go home, we gonna die. So, and then I went back to the hotel room. He's laying there, dick hard, ready to go. I'm like, Pack your shit, let's go, we gotta go. We gotta go, come on, let's go. The world's on fire, I'm not doing any of that shit. I was lying, clearly, it's not your birthday, get the fuck out of here, I'm not doing that. It's not the holidays, get your shit, let's go. That was my last experience <laughs> with New Brunswick. I love seeing how black it is, this is nice. Hey, welcome black people, I don't get you guys much. I don't know why you guys don't like me. I'm not some more, fuck you, I'm trying. Can I have a career? I have dreams too, bitch. Everybody can't be Kevin Hart. Shit. <laughs> black folks don't come to my shit. I don't know. I'm black as I'm from the Bronx. Okay? That's right. I got a razor blade in my hair right now. I got a razor blade in my hair right now. Never forget. I'm from the Bronx. And oh, hey girl, what's up? Hey. It's always a white girl with the black guy who got shit to say. They're always the most chatty. They always want to talk to me. You know I'm not on your side, bitch. Why are you talking to me? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I love, we're all gonna die. Fuck who you can find. Fuck who you can find. <laughs> okay? And that's to be a t-shirt, right? Fuck who you can find. Don't you steal that, sir. That belongs to me. That's my shit. That shit was brilliant. Fuck who you can find. You're all looking at me like, you got something there. You got something. That's just brilliant. Oh my God. Oh boy, I'm a little bit tipsy. That's why I'm inappropriate right off the bat. Um, uh, you know what's funny? You know how this pandemic is really getting to you because my liquor store knows me. I don't like that shit. I, don't, I want to be known at Nordstrom, at my nail shop. You don't want the liquor store to know you. I walked in, they're like, hey, Jackie, fuck you, Abdul, shut your mouth. My mother lives up the block. I don't want everybody to know that you know me like that. Remember how before the pandemic started, you had standards when it came to prices? You'd pay for alcohol? Now they could drop any number. I'm, I'm in there to forget some shit. I'll buy whatever it is you have. He was like, we have a new tequila from The Rock. I'm like, I'll try it, how much? $80. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. $80? How depressed am I? A lot, ma'am, clearly. Really, and you're, okay, black lady with the white guy. I see you doing that. You gave up? Good job. <laughs> what? Not even close? 29 years. 29 years. Married 29 years? Oh my God. 
so you were together when they had the hoses out. When they were, when they had the dogs on us and shit, you were like, fuck it, I love him. I love Jeremy. I want to be with Jeremy. When this shit was illegal. That's how you, that's a pioneer for you. Black lives matter, bitch. You matter. She did it when you weren't supposed to. That's what I'm saying. You must got a big dick. I'm not a fool, ma'am. I'm not an idiot. You may love him, but I know what we love. Oh, girl, ha ha! Bam! She give me the gun. Bam! Ha ha! <laughs> you know what that gun means? You're correct. That's what it means. That's what it means. Oh, I'm already exhausted. Um, I haven't. I'm so happy to be out. Oh my god! I'm just. I, I'm quarantining with my mother, and I'm just. It's just. I lived in LA for 20 years. I'm from the Bronx. I just moved back. I moved back to have a new life in October, to buy a house and have lower expenses, and then COVID's like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> you're so crazy, bitch. Stay in your room. Stay in your room for four months. I'm currently in the same room. I am in my childhood home, which of course I'm aspiring to own. I want to own the house I grew up in. But until then, I am in my bedroom that I grew up in. This room was the first room I ever masturbated in. You understand? where my life is right now, I am back in the one room that I learned what sex felt like, alone. That's where I live, every day. Get it, girl? You are cheering on the wrong shit. You're weird. You don't know cues, you don't know transitions properly. What's your name? Please tell me. Tiff huh? JV. Does that stand for anything? Did you fuck the whole team? What does JV mean? What does JV stand for? It's okay, it's okay. Hey, leave her alone. We all gotta find our way, our way. Okay, leave her alone. What does JV stand for? Jessica Villy Piano. You gave me your whole the acronym for your whole first, middle, and last name. God, you're a lot. Stop touching him. He's not gonna leave. Oh, I know. She's not going to. You wanted a white girl. You deal with it. Don't tell her to chill. Don't come back with that shit now. How dare you? You pick one, you own it. You been in my, of course you've been in high school. You both look 14. I, clearly, I can tell that he ain't had something like me yet. That's why, I know, it's okay, hey. I don't want you now, it's too late. I don't want you now, it's too late. Okay, it comes across racist, I'm not. I don't care about who does what. Love is love, you all, like I said, fuck who you can find, you know, my, my boyfriend happens to be black, but I'm open to everything. I've been trying to hit on white guys. You guys do not hit on me. I don't know why, I do everything right. I watch Seinfeld, I watch Friends. I listen to Coldplay, y'all ain't trying to hit it. I've been trying to get a white guy to come up here and white guys don't have, I don't know what it is, sir. Right here, t-shirt, thank you for dressing up with the Oakley t-shirt, whatever that is you have on. You ever had a black girl before? No. That was too fast, you were lying? Wasn't that quick? You were ready for that answer? Is that because your lady is with you? Is why you didn't want to answer? Is your lady at the table with you? Oh, she's hot. Okay, you're right. You're right. Lie. No, sir, you should lie. She's the best you're ever going to get. You've done. The, you're done. Okay? You're finished. She's hot as hell. That's all you can get. <laughs> Look at what, sir. You, are you wearing jorts? Are those jean shorts that you have on? I'm saying she's really hot, sir. Step it up. Buttons. You know, you want to try for long pants, a belt, anything? Just... You got the belt on? Yeah, but you got that t-shirt at Macy's on clearance. I don't... Oh my God. I, uh... I'm, um... I'm trying to be less drunk. I, I also... I, got, I, ate, I ate two small edibles before I came up here. Because when I get them... When I get edibles for free in New York, I have to, I have to take advantage of it. Weed is hard to get out here. I'm, I lived in Cali 20 years. Weed is free in California. It's, it falls out the tree. They pay you in weed in California. It's incredible. Go try it. Dispensaries are everywhere. My dispensary was next door to my Chase Bank. You understand where I come from? It's not the real world. You can go make a withdrawal and go buy 18 pre-rolls and go on the same block. It was amazing. But I'm learning, I'm learning, because I'm new to weed. Like the boyfriend I have now, I've known him all of my adult life. He's been smoking pot since he was seven. And I always used to be like, I can't, I was that girl, the good girl. I'm like, I can't date you, you smoke marijuana. Now he's like, ha ha, bitch, guess what? We're all high now, fucking hypocrite. So I'm learning, 
how to incorporate weed in my life responsibly. Because in California, it was free with everywhere. In New York, you still gotta know somebody. You gotta have a drug dealer friend. You gotta hang out in the wrong neighborhood. It's still underground. I don't care what you guys say, it's hard to find. And the first time I did an edible, my girlfriends in California, they gave me a Rice Krispie treat. And they're like, Jackie, you're only allowed to have a corner. You can't eat the whole thing. Don't eat the whole thing. I'm like, I'm a big bitch. I want to eat the whole thing. They're like, no, you'll die. We're not going to the ER again. This is all you're allowed to have, this small corner. So I ate the small corner, and they gave me the rest to bring home on an honor system. Yeah. I ate the whole thing, sir. I was so high, I called an ambulance for myself. I swear to God. When the guys got to my house, I was wearing my old wedding dress, a parka, a cowboy hat, a pair of skis. Where I get skis from, bitch? I don't ski. But clearly, when I'm high, I'm also sporty. I didn't know I had these skills. The weed in California is too strong. It's really, it's real. It's like, it's, it, you know the whole the Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre shit? It's like that. It's real. I don't need to be high for three days. I got shit to do. I got a meeting in the morning. I got 14 Zooms this week. I got to be clear. Uh, but I'm, I got to smoke less. I, I was smoking too much because, you know, life is kind of sad, but not really. Anybody, any, how many of you have dealt with a sort of depression? Not depression, but just sadness. You don't understand what's happening, right? You can't, you know, we're all, yeah, we're all human beings. We're all human. Oh, I've been drinking too much and smoking too much because, you know, I made a living doing this and I'm trying to figure out other ways to make a living because I'm not, I can't work anywhere. I'm unhirable. This is the last job I could have. I used to, I used to shoplift. I was an amazing shoplifter. I cleaned that fucking mall out. I don't want to go back to that. I don't want to go back to that, sir. <laughs> I was a booster, bitch. You understand? I was good at it. I don't want to go back to that, because nowadays, you know, 9-11, the, the crime, they'll, they'll put me away for real. I'm wondering every now and then, is this, is this the part that's live on Facebook? Wow. You may want to, I don't know, can we delete that? I have a career. I'm not trying to go back to jail. I forgot about the live stream. God damn it. My mother's going to be like, so you used to lift and boost, let it go. boost they call it. Jamaican woman, a Jamaican family. Yes, big up. Baby love. Everybody white is clapping. Why? Do you love Jamaica? Is that what you're clapping at? You, you're Jamaican? Did y'all meet in Jamaica? You did? You met here. But he, was he in Jamaica? Did he see you when you were there? He's been in Jamaica. Yeah, but once again, what do they call that thing? Hedonism? Is that where y'all met? I can tell. There's something freaky about both of y'all. You make, you make me uncomfortable. Um, you have kids together? I'm sure you do. How many? Four? Wow, just mulattoes running around and all lost and shit. That's nice. And where is, sir, what part of America or wherever you're from? Where are you from? New Jersey. Jersey, all right, you're exotic. I like that. Yeah. He's not exotic at all. I am, um, uh, I'm trying to, get back to a normal eating habit now that the pandemic is letting us go outside. And so I've been, you know what I have to learn? It's, it's, psych, it's psychological, the losing weight and not eating. You have to tell yourself, Jackie, you can't have 5,000 calories a day. I know it feels good, but you can't. That's what I've been doing. Anybody else that, I would, I would, eat pan, I would make pancakes, all kind of eggs, all the bacon and toast, maybe a smoothie. And then I wonder why none of my shirts button when I have to go somewhere. That's every day, man. Since March, I've been eating, I've been happy. Here's the thing, the misnomer, the, the fatter I get, I'm happy. If you see me, I just become a fucking ball with lashes. That means I'm having a great life. It's the other way around. I don't lose weight when I'm happy. I, I, I gain weight when I'm happy. It means I'm working, money is flowing, and now unemployment, just kicked in for me, and I'm, I have no idea. I might be dead in two weeks, so I want you guys to laugh, regardless. How are you, sir? I'm getting, I'm tiring myself out. I shouldn't have drank. I haven't, I haven't had drugs and wine and perform in months. I have no idea what, you, what you're gonna hear. Are you okay with this? Are you guys married? Are we a couple here? How long have you been married? 29, oh, 29, 29, aww. So what, so what? 
I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm not sure if I want to get married though. I was married before, that's why I'm bitter, duh. And I do want to try it again. I was married for eight months to a guy I went for 10 years. When we got married, we got married in Vegas. We eloped in Vegas. And here's the thing about eloping. I thought I was a, I thought I was a reformed, like happy divorcee. I didn't realize that I was still an angry divorcee. Because then when you walk around Vegas, the brides walk around in their dress. They got the dress on, with their face all full of hope and shit. Just newly married. And this bride was so beautiful, I had to stop her. I'm like, look, I too got married here at the Luxor. You look incredible, congratulations. He's like, oh my God, how long have you been married? I said, well, we got married here. Then I left him eight months later. Good luck, bitch, and I walked off. Because I'm still bitter. You guys, I hear the way this night is going, I'll be back. So let's, uh, let me go drink some more. And I bring, give it up for Vinnie Brown. Thank you. That was amazing. That was so good. That was awesome. Give me a mic. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, so that brings us to the close of our live portion, except... Well, I, I just wanted to give this gentleman a little birthday gift. He got a little me. birthday gift yeah, right come here. here. Come here, mister. Thank you. Happy oh, birthday to you. Thank you. Thank Happy you. birthday to you. And what, I, about, what about that couple I'm down there? I'm going to get them. But I'm going to get it. Let's give them their birthday gift on their birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, you're welcome. Happy birthday. So we are gonna we are gonna tell you the following very important things. I uh, I want you to know Jackie Fabulous is coming back up, and you're you're gonna see some more show. And for you people in the audience, we have a, a guest uh, comic coming into a spot as well. That's right. Yeah, fantastic. So you guys got more stuff coming. You people at home, thank you for joining us. You people in the studio audience, you people at home, I need you to do me two very important favors. Like the page. Go to Vinny Brand Comic and like the page, go to Stress Factory, like the page, share the video, right? That's right, share it. Share the video. And we just started our podcast. Yep, yep, we did start our podcast. The first one was a little bumpy, a little bumpy. It was only bumpy for you because we talked about shit you didn't want to talk about. <laughs> our I was podcast, there against my will. Our podcast is on what, Wednesday? On Wednesday. On Wednesday, so our podcast will be up Wednesday, and it'll be up Wednesday on Vinnie Brain Comic. We love you guys. Coming out here. Thank you. Be a part of it. Thank you so much. And I'm going to tell all you people in the audience what I'm going to tell you. It's important. This band, this band every week, they kill it for us. Kill it for us. We got a tip jar up there for them. They're going to play a couple of tunes right now. After Jack Don't be afraid to throw a tip in that tip jar because these guys are going to be superstars one day. Yes, they and are. I want you guys. Oh, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Look at thank you. Thank you. Look at you. So that's our show. Vicky and Vinny, that's Vicky. Thank you. Thank you for coming Thank out. Thank you so much. Hit it, boys. Thank for you. All the credits.
out what it takes.